What's good everyone, Get dig, 4 eyes, 2 G's here, and today we're here to talk about Playboy Cardi and Dilit, and more specifically discussing it in regards to its claim for the title Album of the Year. And as people's lists and discussions for Album of the Year 2018 seem to come about, there was a lot of hesitation about Dilit, as if the album isn't worthy of such a title, as if it's blasphemy to suggest that someone like Playboy Cardi could have an Album of the Year. So, today I wanted to discuss why it is a legit contender for Album of the Year. And just to be clear, that's all I'm suggesting. I'm not saying Dilit is a perfect album, or that it's 100% definitively 2018's Album of the Year hands down, because that would be absurd and no album ever is. Rather, I'm going to take a look at why it stands out to me as a project compared with the rest of 2018's releases as a potential album of the year. Also, just quickly letting you guys know, I've just dropped my very first own merch release. It's a t-shirt that's inspired by a Travis Scott design that he released back in one show in 2015. As you can see, it's from that era with the rodeo text under the graphic. If you guys are interested and want to know more, the link is in the description to purchase a tee. I can ship internationally and I've got them in hand and ready to go. This is something new to me, so I hope you guys like it. Any questions about it, hit me up on IG and I'll respond but getting back to the vid. And it begins with creativity. Let's have a look at what the general contenders for Hip Hop Album of the Year are. According to aggregation done by albumoftheyear.org, the top three hip hop albums that were deemed to be the best of the year by critics were, in order, Daytona, Invasion of Privacy, and Room 25. But for good measure, let's include other popular albums like Kids See Ghosts and Astro World as well. And what I mean by creativity in this sense is a project that did something new for the genre, something inventive and an album that pushed the boundaries. And I'm not taking anything away from the albums I just mentioned, but to be quite frank, I don't think any of these albums aside from maybe Astro World did that. No Name's Room 25 was great, but it definitely didn't do anything new for the genre. Daytona showed Pusha T at his peak rapping wise, but again, I definitely wouldn't say it was anything new for the genre. Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy, while I can't say this was a great album, one thing I can say was that it definitely didn't break new ground. Kids say Ghosts, you could kind of make a bit of an argument for maybe production wise, but I think for the most part what we got creatively from this album was spearheaded by Kid Cudi, and Cudi had done similar things before, maybe even better on albums of his own. And as I said Astral World, I think maybe is the biggest exception to this, with its psychedelic influences creating a fairly unique sound. Whereas, contrast this with Die Lit, and I think Die Lit was able to take hip hop to new territories, more so than the majority of those albums, while Playboy Cardi was able to bring to the table voice wise, with his implementation of the baby voice that morphed words and sentences, as well as the sonic direction of the production with the help of Pierre, creating these bouncy and slightly psychedelic atmospheres that, in cases like Love Hurts, completely did away with hip hop tradition not using any kicks of any kind, made for a one of a Kind project, and in a year that was littered with stale trap releases, helped to keep the genre fresh and give us something different. And I think this is what makes the album so strong. No other album really sounds like Die Lit, and I think compared to albums like Room 25 or Invasion of Privacy, it's much more of a unique listen. And before we go on guys, if you haven't, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you aren't, turn on notifications so you don't miss a video, and follow your boy on all social medias for more. Also, I'm always curious to know what you guys think, so make sure to let me know in the comments below what your album of the year for 2018 is. Another factor to consider was the quality of albums released this year. Sure, in terms of the big names, there were a lot of releases, but it's safe to say that there were more than a few disappointing albums from these heavyweights. Albums like Nasir, Ye, Beast Mode 2, all of the Migos projects, Shrem 3, Scorpion, Testin and Everything Is Love were all pretty highly anticipated but if you take a look at how people are genuinely receiving them, they fail to meet expectations, and for some of the albums, compared to their previous work, the impact they had on the culture just wasn't as strong. And focusing on recent times, these names have come out with Album of the Year tier albums, Kanye with T-Lop, Future's legendary 2015-16 run, Jay-Z with 444, Migos with Culture One, and even Rocky's projects have stood out previously, 
but this year they weren't able to deliver that same quality. So, whilst there were a lot of big name releases, some were mid, and this led to a smaller pool of album of the year worthy projects, and in my opinion, opened up the field for something left of centre like Die Lit to be much more of a serious contender, and made the album stand out as much more of a top tier project, whereas I think if the album was released in say 2015, it would have been much harder for it to stand out. And the last thing to touch on is the replayability of the project. In discussing the album to countless friends and people on the internet, one reoccurring point about Die Lit is the replayability of the project. It's an entrancing listen, and because of the lane Cardi was able to carve for himself on the project, it makes the album unique, and you really have no one else to go to if you were looking for these vibes. And I think that's such a strong suit of the project. In terms of projects that were released in 2018, it's my most listened to by a long shot. And as much as you can try to discredit Cardi by saying he's a below average rapper, you can't take away the enjoyability of the project, and its replayability has made me come back to it again and again throughout the year. And I guess that's it. I don't know, I felt like adding my two cents on this topic, because as much as it is a bit of a meme to say Die Lit Album of the Year, it is in fact kind of a valid choice if you picked it. And just because Cardi isn't an overly technically skilled rapper, or just because it doesn't tell a cohesive well fleshed out theme or storyline, or just because it's quote unquote mumble rap, doesn't mean anything anymore. It's 2019, and if it's not obvious already, people like Cardi are the ones pushing the genre forward. In 2018, there were a fair share of big name releases that were mid, and there were even more albums that did nothing but regurgitate the same old tired trap formula. And amongst these albums, Die Lit was a fresh breath of air, and I think emerged as a standout project. And that's all from me today guys. Thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you aren't, turn on notifications so you don't miss a video, and follow your boy on all social medias for more. Also, as I said, make sure to let me know your album of the year in the comments.